The camera didn't catch 26 years that we shared with Whitney. And for others, it was 13 years, it was four years. We tried to put all those years and experiences in four hours. Very difficult to do, but we know the other part. We know the years and the special moments that we all shared, not just my family, but her and others, you know. Um, it was just a glimpse of what I the think there was, saw. what, maybe one camera there? Yeah. And I, I didn't know where he was. Uh, but the whole spirit of the service and the laughter, the tears, the emotion, the, it wasn't able to get all of that. Now, if it would have been a five-shot, you know, funeral, you would have got shots, but you would have lost the genuineness of, mm -hmm. of what was going on. So now, now there's a whole lot of things the camera didn't get. You come in, you glance over the life, and you are celebratory because of the life. It has nothing to do with records, uh, has nothing to do with how many people around the world know you. And even though I think they said 100 million people were watching or listening, uh, it was just uh, a, a home going, a, a church service within the confines of what Christians believe. It was very emotional. Oh, yeah. A lot of emotional moments. Mm -hmm. and were there yeah. Oh, yeah. Special moments for you? For, for oh, you know, to, to me, the whole service, but one of the most special moments for me was Cece singing Don't Cry. Yeah. And not because it was Cece, but for me, Whitney sang a song that he wrote in return that was on me and Cece's album, a song uh, Don't Cry for me, which is the song Cece sang. And every time she would sing it in Germany and various other places around the world, she would call and say, oh, Wait till you hear the way I did this. Dinner. You know, she was so glad to sing these songs. They meant so much to her. So when Cece was singing that, I thought of the many times I saw Whitney sing it. And so to me, that was a very special message because she was saying in the song, don't cry for me, you know, I'm in a better place. So very special. And I, I don't know who, who, who did the thing at the end, but when her voice came in at the end oh, of the service, man. that just did it. it was and they like, lifted that oh coffee. Oh, my God. It was, that, that was a very emotional moment, you know. And to march her out, and she's saying, I will still love you. It's like she was telling everybody there, I will always love you. you know? it, was, it was amazing. She became a wine. Yeah. She really did become a wine. And, and you know, uh, we... We, we celebrate her voice and those accomplishments that she accomplished, but to us and to others who were very close to her, it was the crazy Whitney that we enjoyed. You were talking about something today. Yeah, that she would just do stuff. <laughs> Not because she was Whitney Houston, the star, mm -hmm. but she was just this mischievous little girl from New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And that's what won over the star. Now, she could give you all the glamour in the world. Oh, yeah. But uh, she just never, I remember one time she was talking to me, she said, my nickname is Peanut. And she said, Peanut? I said, what, Nip? And she said, do you know what somebody told me? I said, what? They ran up to me and said, how does it feel to be Whitney Houston? <laughs> and she couldn't understand that. She couldn't understand, <laughs> what do you mean, how does it feel to be Whitney Houston? I've always been Whitney Houston. And that's the part that most folk they didn't consciously recognize that's who she was. She wasn't putting on, uh, but she, she was who she was. And when she found people that accepted, accepted her for her. that, right. then it was- She wouldn't let you go. You have an exclusive. You have an exclusive. We had not told anyone, but us three, we just formed a new group. And so we had planned this and it was our first time in the studio together. And it's really a, a dream of his come true. <laughs> <laughs> He's always he wanted always to sing. He always said I wanted him. to sing with them. But um, so this is our first, this is studio time we had set and, and somehow we made it, but this is our first session of an album that we're doing together. And so this is the first song that we're recording, the song about my brother Ronald and with The song comes from a reality in our lives. We lost our brother about seven years ago. Time passes real fast, boy. And uh, 
in, in that loss, this song was birthed through that loss. And so I've been writing, you know, lyric changes here and there over the years. And so when Whitney passed, she was such a part of our family. Yeah. It just made sense to sing this song and then change a couple of words here and there. But uh, it's our song to our loved ones. Ronald was my favorite brother. And I think they knew that, right? You knew that. It could have yeah, been. You knew that, right? Yeah, Ron? yeah. I'm not hurt. <laughs> <laughs> so to lose Ronald and to now lose Whitney, it's a double whammy, but there is such a joy knowing, you know, we'll see him again.